give that uh, upgrade news firstly from ANZ, which is a story we started with. One and a half billion dollars, is that money well spent? I think ANZ is a bit of a laggard in this area. If we have a look at CBA as well as Westpac, they're well into replacing their uh, core banking requirements. CBA really started its program about three years ago, and Westpac's been in its program for one to two years. And this also allows new technology like same-day clearing, um, Commonwealth Bank through its Kaching uh, products. So it does look like ANZ looking to uh, upgrade some of its uh, core banking facilities here domestically. and altogether a $1.5 billion spend. We know that ANZ's uh, strategy is to be a super regional and that is to uh, target about 25 to 30 percent of its underlying earnings uh, from the Asia Pacific uh, and Americas and Europe by 2017. It's at about 13 percent at the moment. Um, so it does look like it's still going to focus in on its Australia strategy and I guess here domestically it doesn't really have a competitive advantage. So while 1.5 billion dollars does sound like a, quite a big spend, I think ANZ is lagging in this department. We've seen C CBA really launching on this path around about three years ago in Westpac uh, um, Westpac about one to two years into its program, so ANZ announcing its program, its five-year program today. What they might do, is it, is it a simple re recycling into uh, the bricks and mortar to go head-to-head -head with coals, or could there be another, I suppose, a strategy at play? And that's really the key here, whether we are going to see this um, move being earnings accretive to shareholders. I guess it's going to be accretive, but only about 0.7% according to uh, the numbers that we've seen. It will free up about $750 million worth of capital, but I guess just a bit of a question mark on whether it is really good news for shareholders. It does look like in terms of how it will work, it may be similar to the Westfield-Westfield Retail Trust split, mm. and that's where we see this creation of a property vehicle which pays distributions to a parent company and then secondly the capital raising to uh, really bring down the gearing levels in that property uh, por portfolio and that property vehicle so altogether it does look like uh, a lot of market speculation around this the Australian Financial Review came out with an article around it on Tuesday so 70 properties are uh, valued at 1.5 billion dollars it probably end up freeing about 750 million dollars uh, worth of capital but the big question mark is is this going to be good news for shareholders given the difficult environment environment we're seeing in the food and liquor area, are we going to see this as a positive catalyst for the share price given that the food and liquor division is such a big driver of Woolies? And you think the jury's out on whether you actually do that get that reaction? I mean, what's the answer to that question? <laughs> well, well, it is a quite co complex, but if we have a look at what's driven Woolworths and West Farmers share price over the past few years, it has been the food and liquor division and that still remains a difficult part. What we will see in terms of this spin out of the property portfolio is a reshuffling of assets, but that doesn't really change the underlying business and the difficulties that Woolworths is facing in terms of its underlying business. So a bit of a reshuffle, de-gearing of its property portfolio into another structure which uh, brings up some options later on if it does want to sell off that property portfolio. But altogether the core question in Woolworths strategy is that food and liquor division and how it's really going to maintain its com competitive edge there against that uh, fight that we're seeing with Coles. Peter, thank you. Julia, just on the overall market today, yeah, we had a great day Tuesday, kind of ran out of steam yesterday. What can we expect today? I think the area to be watching will be the materials and the energy space, and that's because we saw that big fall in oil prices overnight. Not only are we watching that energy space for some downward movement because of that big fall in oil, but of course BHP built and a lot of its revenues comes from the oil and gas space as well. So expecting to see downward pressure on BHP. If we have a look at the US session, we did see a rise overnight up by 0.4%. The ISM services number as well as the ADP private job survey, both better than expected. But we saw the telecom and the discretionary sectors the big winners there. So altogether, it does look like a day of consolidation consolidation on the Australian share market, we may be able to eke out some strong get, uh, some small gains on the basis of the overseas leads that we've seen. But as we've seen all week, it's been so quiet on the Australian market. It's still school holidays and it's still a holiday in China, so expecting those low volumes. And as you and uh, Carson mentioned, uh, those numbers dropping at 11.30, the building approvals as well as the retail sales numbers uh, will be watched carefully. Yeah. Um